How's it going everybody? Welcome back and today I'm going to be talking about how you can make your VPN undetectable and bypass VPN blocks. So you've got websites, online services, governments, and even ISPs that block VPN traffic for various reasons. And not all VPNs have the capabilities to get around these blocks. So you could be left without access to certain websites and online resources depending on the services used. Now, of course, with the right VPN, you can bypass these VPN blocks. And unfortunately, with the oversaturation of uh, VPNs in the market today, it can be really confusing as to which could be the best choice for you. So I went ahead and tested over a couple of dozen VPNs and I've narrowed it down to these three as the best overall. And they all vary in budgets and features. So pick and choose depending on your own situation and what you're looking for out of these VPNs and your own preferences and budget, of course. And I've got Express, Nord, and Surfshark, all of which work remarkably well. But let's say you're using any of these VPNs in, in the off chance and the very unlikely event that they're not working for whatever reason or you're not able to uh, bypass the geo restrictions. First of all, you need to choose any obfuscation options you have available. Now with ExpressVPN, there are no such options because the obfuscation is always on by default. So it's as much of a plug and play VPN as it can get. You don't have to adjust anything to make it work. Now with NordVPN, you've got obfuscated servers and Onion over VPN, which will help you connect to the VPN if you're in a censorship heavy country. With Surfshark, you can go to the settings right here, go to VPN settings and turn on rotating IP and no borders mode to help you connect from countries with censorship heavy restrictions. Now, another thing you wanna look out for is protocols. So if you're finding that a specific protocol, let's say you're connecting to lightweight TCP or OpenVPN UDP, if you're finding that one of the protocols that you're connected to isn't exactly working, maybe you're having trouble connecting, maybe it takes too long to connect, I would just recommend switching protocols or going back to automatic. This way, the VPN will just adjust to your connection and whatever protocol it deems best, it will simply pick it for you. Now, for me, Lightweight UDP works almost 100% of the time, so I never have to change it. And it's the same thing with NordVPN. Uh, for the most part, I go with NordLynx and it works just fine. And again, with Surfshark, I go with the WireGuard protocol. Now, these protocols are the best performing protocols because I aim for speed and low latency for gaming. So that's what I choose most of the time. And it really works almost 100% of the time. Now, if you're using a VPN where you can change ports, you can change ports uh, specifically to the 443 or 80 ports. And if your VPN doesn't support changing ports, again, you can just try using the options that I mentioned here, such as obfuscated servers or turning on the option right here with uh, Surfshark. This is kind of the same as changing ports. It's just that the Surfshark VPN right here or NordVPN are going to be doing the port switching for you instead of you having to do it manually. And this is part of the great user experience that comes with NordVPN and Surfshark. Whereas with ExpressVPN, you don't really have to do anything. It's just plug and play because it works specifically to bypass geo restrictions. Obviously, the number one thing is that you want to choose a highly secure VPN, which is why I've picked these VPNs right here. And they all offer 256 bit AES encryption and they have a strict no locks policy. Now, another idea to bypass VPN blocks uh, is to switch to mobile data. Now, schools and workplaces often block VPNs to restrict the content you can access. And obviously, you can overcome this by switching Wi-Fi off and using mobile data. So you can use your VPN as usual. However, this won't help you avoid DPI or governmental censorship. Another thing you can do is use a dedicated IP address, which is going to be exclusively yours. That way, it's highly unlikely to be blacklisted. Normally, when you connect to a VPN server, you share an IP with other people who are connected. With so many users simultaneously using the same IP, it can look suspicious to the sites you try to access. A dedicated IP makes it easier to bypass blocks, plus it also prevents CAPTCHA security alerts, which are common with frequent server switching. Now you can buy your own dedicated IP with NordVPN, or you can use the free dedicated IPs uh, that are available with Surfshark and NordVPN. That way you'll always be getting the same IP address when you return to these servers, rather than having to go through the 
dynamic IPs which are ever changing when you use the regular servers. Now, when you have the option, depending on the VPN you're using, you also have the option to change DNS. So, you know, maybe you can use the Google DNS or any other DNS because changing your DNS can be an effective strategy for bypassing ISP blocks, but it's generally not recommended. Now, I would recommend using the DNS of the VPNs that you're connected to. So when you turn on any of these VPNs and use them and connect to one of their servers, you'll be using the VPN provider's DNS. And that's exactly what I recommend going for. But of course, you don't have to worry about any of that if you're using a reliable VPN in the first place, which is why I've tested over 30 VPNs and I've narrowed it down to these three as the best overall for bypassing VPN blocks and censorship. So for the most part, you don't really have to go through any of the measures that I mentioned as long as you're using a good, reliable VPN. Now, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about the privacy policy, speed streaming and torrenting capabilities, as well as security features of these VPNs, you can check out the reviews down below uh, and you'll find links to pricing discounts if you'd like to go straight to that. Either way, they're all covered by a 30 day money back guarantee. So let's say you're not satisfied with any of these. You can just ask for the refund. Granted, you ask for it before the 30th day. So mark your calendars for that so that you're not charged any further. Besides that, comment below if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer all of them. Like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel and stay up to date with everything VPNs and cybersecurity. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day.